is the motion picture trademark of Cosman, the central office for South Vietnam. Cosman is the communist organization and command headquarters that is directing the war effort against the Republic of Vietnam. pictures that you're about to see were produced by the newsreel facilities of Cosman. They were captured several months ago near the Cambodian border by elements of the 173rd Airborne Brigade. Now many of the captured newsreels were damaged or of poor quality, but we salvaged enough film to provide a good close-up look of the Viet Cong and their operations. This is the Viet Cong as the Viet Cong would like to see themselves. In the first sequence, we take you behind enemy lines for a series of reports of the VC in combat. Now, these scenes of preparation and action were probably staged, but they do show the Viet Cong tactics and techniques. Translated, this title reads, Military Operations by the 9th Viet Cong Main Force Division in retaliation for the bombings of Hanoi and Haiphong. Division members are summoned before the division political officer just prior to moving to the attack site. Squad and platoon leaders wear banners proclaiming their determination to avenge the bombings of the North. Similar pledges are printed on cards fastened to the hats of individual soldiers. Here the division political officer presents ropes to regimental political officers as a sign of his confidence that the battle will be won and prisoners will be taken. The regimental political officers in turn use the ropes to inspire confidence in the soldiers directly under their command. The bugler sounds the attack, and the individual platoons and companies move on foot to their respective positions. Kong attack is against an American armored personnel carrier. The vehicle is destroyed and several members of its crew are killed. Prisoners captured during the battle are marched barefoot through the jungle. Next, we have a series of newsreel sequences on Viet Cong attacks against Allied units in South Vietnam, with Thay Ninh's Black Virgin Mountains in the background, the communist guerrillas make ready. Women and children carry supplies and ammunition to designated depots. and equipment used by the VC are Soviet models, most of which have been manufactured in communist China. The first attack will be against a South Vietnamese outpost, manned by soldiers of the Civilian Irregular Defense Group, the CIDG. Final communications check is made using both communist and captured American manufactured equipment. The South Vietnamese forces walk into the ambush 
and the Viet Cong opened fire. Again, the dead are both South Vietnamese and Americans. The jungle has provided the Viet Cong with a strategic sanctuary from which to strike. When the battle is ended, no weapons are left behind. Any Viet Cong who brings in an enemy weapon is decorated for his heroic deed. The captured equipment is of great importance to the communists in their guerrilla war. And this fact is emphasized strongly in these propaganda newsreels. When the weapons and ammunition have been returned to the base camp, they're logged in, stockpiled, and checked out for the next communist assault. The enemy in the Republic of Vietnam makes use of every tactic, old and new, in guerrilla warfare. In this next sequence, the Viet Cong company commander plots an all-out attack against a small South Vietnamese hamlet. The Buter once again sounds the charge, and the VC stream out of the jungle to overrun the settlement. The communists have undergone grueling physical training programs to prepare themselves, emotionally and psychologically, for the harsh demands of guerrilla warfare. Attacks such as the one shown here are undertaken to harass Allied units in the area. Prisoners are taken, and they are identified as members of the Civilian Irregular Defense Guard and the 10th Vietnamese Government Army Division. The PWs, as in the earlier sequence, are marched off for interrogation. With the battle won, the Viet Cong are welcomed into the hamlet by their communist supporters. And according to the original newsreel commentary, a special program is presented by the women of the settlement in tribute to their so-called liberators. It's important to remember that the film you've seen and will see is Viet Cong propaganda. Its purpose is to show you one side, the communist side, of the conflict in the Republic of Vietnam. At the same time, it does provide a realistic insight into the motives and the methods of the BC. Now we've seen the enemy in combat. Now let's look at another side of the communist war effort in South Vietnam, and the area of operations that shows the Viet Cong work in the fields of logistics and demolition. Much of the food, weapons, and equipment used by the Viet Cong is transported into tactical areas by walking the material across the countryside. Here, bags of rice are carried across a river and into the jungle. Many of them armed make up more than half of the communist transportation force. Another of the primary means of transportation is by bicycle. Each bicycle is reinforced so that it can carry more than 300 pounds over rough terrain 
and up to 500 pounds on level ground. The Viet Cong are equally thorough in their utilization of captured weapons and equipment. Demolition experts disassemble unexploded bombs and remove their destructive contents. Blacksmiths then use the metal to make grenade casings and gun barrels. In the guerrilla warfare that the Viet Cong are waging, nothing is wasted. Everything is utilized. Communists adapt their ways to the war they must fight. Booby traps are fashioned by hand and planted at night outside the perimeter of U.S. and South Vietnamese camps. Next, we see a graphic demonstration of the methods used and the objectives achieved in sabotaging railroads and bridges in the Republic of Vietnam. The communists, wherever they can, coerce or impress local inhabitants to help them in their destructive raids. A government train that has been derailed is grim witness to the effectiveness of the VC tactics. Blasting is more expensive, but the results are also more thorough. Small charges placed at the joints of the rails on both sides of the track can tear open gaps that are undetectable at a distance and will almost certainly cause a derailment. Here, with the aid of a model bridge, a Viet Cong instructor briefs a communist guerrilla before sending him out with the demolition team. Explosive charge is prepared by other members of the guerrilla unit. The VC 